Thanks for joining me on another video. Well, this one's going to be an epic. Well, I think it's going to be an epic. I'm going to build, as you may have seen from the title, a commuter scooter. A two-wheel drive commuter scooter to be exact, and to be even more exact, an electric two-wheel drive scooter. So, I've bought these hub motors and a range of other hardware, and that's all going to go into a machine with a carbon fibre deck, a carbon fibre stem, which is where the steering gear is. It'll fold, and listen to all of these specs. So it should be pretty good when it's finished. Uh, the purpose behind it is to build like a last mile solution type vehicle. So uh, you get on the train, you've got to go somewhere, when you get to the other end, uh, you know, it'll be what, a taxi or an Uber or something relatively expensive. Nope, a two wheel drive, last mile solution. So you can go that last bit of the uh, journey relatively economically and under your own steam. Okay, let's start with the big boys. These are hub motors, 32 volt, uh, they're intended for 32 volt power. Um, and uh, I'm not sure exactly what wattage they are. Um, in Australia, we're only allowed to have 250 watts of uh, electric power on a non-registered electric vehicle. Um, so uh, that's pretty much where we'll be at with those. Disc brakes. Now, you've got regen braking on most electric vehicles, and this will have uh, regen braking. Uh, but I don't want to be in a situation where my 92 kilos is plummeting down a hill at X amount of speed, and I've got no uh, nothing more than than regen braking. Because at some point in time, uh, the regen braking will reach a threshold where it's able to slow the the scooter down, and um, once you go over that threshold, I guess it'll start to accelerate again. So, brakes. Um, and these beautiful little brake levers. Look at these. They are just gorgeous. Super lightweight. Um, these are mountain bike gear levers. And um, Light Pro is the brand. Uh, these were about, I think they are about $26 a pair or something crazy. Um, brake components, uh, uh, Bowden tube uh, and an inner. Um, the inners that I specified, that, that one's long enough for the front brake but not long enough for the back so I've got to get another one of those which I'll probably get locally. And these beautiful little items here which are my disc brake calipers. Um, these, are, these are gorgeous um, but they've taken <laughs> They've taken a lot of modelling in uh, in Fusion. I've, I've completely modelled these in Fusion um, so that I could include them in the design. And believe me, these are basically stamped parts um, from what I can tell. Um, and uh, maybe not the actual caliper itself. I think that's machine. But, you know, the tolerances in the, in the mounting bracket, for example, are, you know, relatively loose. So that took a bit of that took a bit of modelling. Now here's the last component. This is the controller, and in some ways this is uh, what kicked this project off. Uh, a friend of mine was making an e-bike, and he didn't have an eBay account, so I ordered uh, a controller for him, and it never showed up. So I got in touch with the with the vendor. And I said, you know, this didn't actually arrive, so he sent another one. And then, a week or so later, I had a phone call from a post office that was the wrong post office saying, we've got a package for you, Mr. Roberts. So I'm like, oh, okay, really? Uh, so I went down to that post office, and lo and behold, there was the, the controller. So I don't feel like I cheated. Um, if it hadn't been for the post office, actually tracking me down I, I never would have got this so anyway um, have controller the only thing I don't have at the moment now is a battery so I'll be looking into 
um, doing an 18650 battery and uh, that will also include um, starting a, 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 a sub project within this project of uh, building a spot welder so that I can I can spot weld a battery pack together so that's something to look forward to all right let's have a look at the uh, CAD model in Fusion 360 okay here's my design so as you see there's a fair number of components that have to be constructed or uh, manufactured for this what I've tried to do with the fork assembly is duplicate that on the rear as well so I just get a decent look at that so I'm not uh, making a whole bunch of different components in this case I'll be making two of these whoops four of these etc etc these are the brake calipers that I painstakingly modeled uh, believe me that was a lot of work in that um, I haven't done every last detail on them. I often don't uh, because really it uh, gets down to the point where you're not, uh, you know, you're not actually making anything that's significant. Uh, you just want to get the uh, true dimensions. And the important thing with the brake caliper is, of course, that this slot in the brake caliper fits over the disc. And the other consideration is that you don't want the... Um, the uh, brake pucks or the brake pads uh, to be further out uh, to the edge than the uh, than the disc. Basically, because what happens is if the uh, if the brake pad overlaps the disc, then what will happen is the uh, uh, is the brake pad will wear with a little lip on it, and eventually what will happen is the uh, brake pads will start touching together and render the braking a little ineffective um, so there you go there's a lot of duplicate parts there uh, this is the obviously the carbon fiber deck and the carbon fiber stem there's a bracket here and also this is the folding mechanism right here so there's a uh, a catch here you pull this lever downwards and the catch disengages from this pin and then the whole stem and everything folds back towards the rear wheel. Now, I haven't finished the steering uh, column yet and, uh, and the handlebars and so forth. Um, what I'll be doing is using a piece of aluminium tube for the steering. Um, and I'm going to make a fitting that fits over this uh, arrangement. And, of course, there'll be two lock nuts here. I've got proper tapered roller bearings in the stem. Now, another aspect of the design is that the deck is hollow underneath, and that's where the controller is going to go. Um, I've left room for a battery charger, a four amp battery charger, and obviously the battery as well. Now, there's a bit more room under here to add more cells. At the moment, this is going to be a series parallel uh, 36 volt battery uh, so there's I think 10 cells uh, in series and then those two series uh, components will be paralleled up uh, for um, the purposes of uh, getting some decent current out of the unit so it's all going to be self-contained uh, the idea is that there'll be a uh, uh, a plug or a socket arrangement rather on the uh, on the deck and basically just be able to roll up somewhere and plug it in and that will then charge the batteries so something like an IEC inlet or something like that with a cover over it and so maximum convenience and portability and yeah so this is the epic build and now I've got to find a supplier or a, or a machine shop to make these parts for me. Uh, and I hope that doesn't turn into you know, some great drawn out um, communication problem. Uh, I really want to find uh, a machine shop that I can uh, deal with 
Obviously, it's going to be in China. It might possibly be in Taiwan. Uh, but I want to find a machine shop that I can communicate with easily and that can you know, make these parts for me that's not going to cost me a fortune. I'd like to thank everybody who's subscribed to the channel. I enjoy reading your comments and I try to respond to them all personally in a reasonable space of time. Uh, I do have to work and that's the reason that uh, I'm not just like full time making all these sort of projects and stuff. I wish I was, but uh, you know, that might be for another 10 years hence. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Onward and upward.